Hey guys, welcome back to NEMT Van Talks. I'm Jasmine. And I'm Monica. And today we are giving tips to new NEMT business owners that are looking to get into the industry. Right. And not just looking to get in the industry, but what if you're already in the industry and you just may need some additional tips on ways to grow and scale your business? Like, this is what we're here for. So this is what this video is about today. So we tell you guys all the time about... Oh, she's so excited about this one. Yeah. So we tell you guys all the time about how we were new in the industry and we didn't have like ebooks and YouTube and some of these other things that A is content offered. partner. Right. Oh, girl, we did not have this. Like the resources were not there. Even when it came to YouTube, like just valuable information that we could utilize within our business, like tips just tips how do we get started like how do we get started when we do get started like how we can grow and scale our business so this is a good idea yes so tip number one i want to let you guys know that it is extremely important that you make sure that you have the right business licenses to operate your business mm -hmm. Why do I say that? Yes. Tell me why. I say that because licensing is a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have the proper licenses to operate your business, you are not compliant. Mm -hmm. And if you're not compliant, you run the risk of your doors being closed. Okay. So you don't want to invest all this time and energy into building your business, but you're not compliant. And then, like I said, you run the risk of having to close down your business or you could possibly face hefty fines and or you could lose contracts yeah as well yeah yeah, yeah contracts or you may limit yourself to what contracts you can you can work with and what contracts yep. you can't I, I agree so you definitely want to make sure that you're compliance when it comes to licenses and permits that's a good one and then i think my tip would be start small and then grow because a lot of times when you're thinking about starting your business like you want to start with three or more vehicles which that is great if you can but i will say start small grow your business and what i mean by that is start within your means if you know that you can start with a vehicle or two vehicles try that before you try to start with like three or more vehicles and you're not sure how how this business operate so it is always to just just get started just start small and then when you feel like it's time for you to grow and expand your business then you add on additional um, vehicles within your fleet yeah i think that's a good one mm -hmm. and then also when i think about starting and vehicle selection and starting small mm -hmm. i think about opportunities right so what are the opportunities that you're going to go after when you start your business? I do know that we talked to several people and they're like, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to start with, you know, three vehicles because mm -hmm. um, select brokers are saying that I need three, three vehicles mm -hmm. to start. If it doesn't fit your business plan, if you don't have the financial budget mm -hmm. to realistically start with three vehicles, don't do it no nope. start small but you also want to make sure that you have a good understanding of your business operations so when you're just starting out you may not know a whole lot about the nemt industry mm -hmm. but eventually as you continue to build mm -hmm. your business grow your business you will learn more and more and then at that time you can take that knowledge right and expand your business right and then feel confident in expansion yep. because you have a good idea of the operations mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> while you're doing that you also want to make sure that you are professional at all times Ooh. okay being professional is like a must you want to make sure you're acting and conducting yourself professional at all times even if you're not wearing your business brand or logo or your 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 business attire you still should be conducting yourself as a professional individual okay so even when you're out in the community 
um, you know, because sometimes you, you leave behind your business cards, like you're marketing your business all the time. And so you want to make sure that you're presenting yourself in a professional manner. So people will, they want to know, like, what is it that you do? Who are you? Like they are curious about you as an individual. And then you can share with them your business and what it is that you do. So yeah, it's professional. Yeah, that's a good one. And actually yesterday I was at the gas station, Monica, and this taxi cab backs in, right? And he had his windows down right away. I could smell the heavy smell of cologne, like um. coming out of the vehicle. And I'm like... He's transporting passengers. Like, why does he have that heavy, heavy yeah. cologne on? Like, so, like, you want to think about all these things too, mm -hmm. right? Because let's just say your driver wears, you know, cologne and he puts on so much of it where, you know, your clients don't like the smell of it. Yeah. That could deter them from mm -hmm. returning back to your business, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like, I don't want to be in that van because of the smell, right? Yeah. I don't like the smell. So, you know, when it comes to, you know, appearance, when it comes to, you know, personality traits, all of those things, you definitely want to just make sure that you're professional, you know, yeah. just like, you know, medical professionals. I worked in the hospital for long periods mm -hmm. of time and they'll tell you, like, you're not supposed to wear perfume, mm -hmm. right? You're not supposed to wear perfume because the patient's will complain they yeah. complain actually they've complained several times within the clinic that i worked in with people wearing perfumes and things like yeah. that so implement that within your business as well maybe you need to have some type of policy and your policy mm -hmm. state that right um but then also you know bad drivers Girl. don't waste your time on bad drivers if there is something that you see within one of your drivers mm -hmm. And you have given them the proper training yes. and it's still just, mm -hmm. they're still continuing to present bad behavior, mm -hmm. get rid of them right away. Yeah. Don't waste time with bad drivers. That's a good one. But I also want to let you know, good drivers, the drivers that you can count on, you know that they're going to be there for your business. They go above and beyond. Mm -hmm. You want to go above and beyond for, for them. them. Yes. So, you know, it's hard to find good drivers. So when you find them, you need to treat keep them, them yep. and treat them well. Yep. So we just wanted to share with you a couple of tips to help you as a new NEMT yes. business owner or if you're an existing business owner and maybe you didn't know some of these things, mm -hmm. like we got you. But we have so many more tips in our arson that we are just ready to, you know, lit out and yes. give to you yes. right so if you're looking for more tips i want you to click on the link below in our description we got more tips for you and a worksheet yes. to get you started in yes. the nmt industry so go ahead and download that worksheet and we got you yes we got you don't worry about <laughs> it and if you're an existing nmt business owners and you have tips yes. that you want to share with our community drop them in the comment section you yes. know you may know something that we don't know that could help the community of nmt providers we would love to hear your tips as well so certainly drop them below all right, all right. guys